Welcome to this Carlisle United Methodist Church Safe Sanctuaries and Mandated Reporter Training Video, Part 3. In Part 1, you learned about the Safe Sanctuaries policy and rules that help govern how we care for children and youth in regards to the church facility, supervision of events, and staff and volunteer screening. In Part 2, you learned the classifications of child abuse and how to identify child abuse. The purpose of Part 3 is to know how to report suspected child abuse, how to complete the CY47 form, and what happens after a report is made. After this video, you will be required to complete a short quiz. Let's get started with the last part. If you suspect child abuse and need to make a report, reporting forms for both the state and the church are available through the CUMC website and binders located in the church nursery and church office. Step-by-step -step instructions are included. The first step is to call Childline. Childline can be reached by telephone or their online website. The phone number is listed on our Church Safe Sanctuaries website, as well as the binders in the nursery and church office. The online reporting link is also on our website. Note, you will need to create a personal login to use the Childline online reporting system. If you telephone Childline, you will be instructed to complete a CY47 report. Instructions for this form are on the back of the form. You must complete the form within 48 hours of contacting Childline. Please make a copy of your report to retain for your records. If you choose to report online, the system will automatically have you complete the CY47 online and the follow-up form is not required. In either case, as a reporter you do not have to complete all the information on the forms, just what you know. If an investigation occurs, Children and Youth Services will secure the additional information. CUMC also has a report form that is required to be completed by anyone who contacts Childline. This form is available online and in the binders as well. It is a much shorter form with fewer details. This report goes to the pastors. Once a report is made, the pastors are required to make our conference office aware of the situation reported. The pastors will reach out with pastoral support to all those involved in the situation, leaving the investigation in the hands of Children and Youth Services. The person making the report must complete the form. If there are questions completing the form, please speak with the person in charge of the ministry or a pastor. If the suspected abuser is an employee or volunteer, after notifying Childline, please talk to the pastor immediately. The pastor will then assist with the correct notifications. If the suspected abuser is a pastor, after notifying Childline, please talk immediately to the chair of the Leadership Council. PA law and church policy mandate that this three-step procedure be followed. Now, let's review some real-life scenarios. Scenario 1. The youth volunteer leader at the church notices that Josefina is on the youth retreat and changing her clothes in a different location than everyone else. Previously, she had always stayed with the other girls, but now goes off by herself to change. When the volunteer youth leader asks her if everything is okay, Josephina starts to cry and shares that her uncle was sexually abusing her. What should the youth leader do? Option 1. The youth leader should make the report of suspected child abuse by immediately calling Childline and completing the CY47 report. The youth volunteer must also notify the youth leader and or the pastor. Option 2. Affirm Josephina for sharing this information. Then ask her to go with you to the youth leader to share the same information so you both can help her. Option 3. The youth leader should approach Josephina's mother and find out more information. Option 1 is correct. By making a report of suspected child abuse to Child Line, completing the CY47 report, and notifying the youth leader or pastor, the youth leader volunteer fulfills both her legal and safe sanctuary's requirements to make the report and engages the authorities to respond as needed. Scenario 2. Mrs. Coy, an adult helping at VBS, notices a student in her group, Mitch, 
is wearing long sleeves despite the warm weather outside. When Mitch rolls up his sleeves in the sun, Mrs. Coy sees bruises and open wounds on his forearm. As the night ends, Mitch cries and tells Mrs. Coy that he is scared to go back to his house. What should Mrs. Coy do? Option one, there is no need to report suspected abuse. She is only a volunteer and not the pastor or staff person. Option two, she should immediately report the abuse to Childline, complete a CY47 report, and report the suspected abuse to the children's ministry director or pastor to protect the child from going home. Option three, Mrs. Coy went home and after thinking more, calls the pastor to share what happened and her concern for Mitch and his family. Option two is correct. Even though Mrs. Coy isn't a pastor or staff member, her role as an unpaid volunteer qualifies her as a mandated reporter under Pennsylvania law. This means that by law, she is responsible to call Child Line, submit a CY 47, and report the abuse to the children's ministry director or pastor. Scenario three. Pastor Amy notices that once again Kelly has come to church with dirty clothes. This is the latest in a series of events, including previous observations of Kelly, always saying she doesn't have food at home and seeing an apparent lack of dental care. Pastor Amy is aware of several parishioners' attempts to intervene and provide some support and assistance to the family to no avail. What should happen? Option one, Pastor Amy should immediately contact Childline, complete a CY47 report for the county where the abuse is observed, and contact her district superintendent regarding the incident. Option two, Pastor Amy should attempt to reach out on her own and help the child. Option three, the next day, Pastor Amy should call Kelly's school counselor, sharing her observations and seeing what the counselor recommends. Option one is correct. Since Pastor Amy suspects child abuse, she should call Child Line immediately. She should complete a CY47 report to the Children and Youth Services. And Pastor Amy must also notify the district superintendent as soon as possible. Scenario four. Billy arrives for Sunday school with a nasty bruise on his forehead. He withdraws when the teacher tries to touch his face to get a better look. While he says it hurts, he won't talk about it. His mother explains that her son fell from the kitchen counter trying to get into the cookie jar, and he is embarrassed and feels guilty by his actions. Is the Sunday school teacher mandated to report this? What should the Sunday school teacher do? Option one, yes, the teacher should report any bruises on a child. Option two, no, the teacher is not mandated to report this bruise. The teacher knows Billy and believes he likely did fall from the kitchen counter. Option two is correct. No, the teacher is not mandated to report this bruise. The teacher knows Billy and believes he likely did fall from the kitchen counter. These are real examples where your training about what and how to report may be used. Although we pray we never have to make a report about suspected abuse, all our staff and volunteers need to be ready in case abuse is suspected so we can help protect the children and youth that God has placed in the ministries of our church. There are three important questions that we want to address briefly before proceeding. We begin with, are there any exceptions to the laws governing the mandatory reporting of child abuse? The Pennsylvania Child Protective Services Law provides exception for clergy within a spiritual counseling setting for Catholic priests when the incident is many years ago. For United Methodist clergy, any time clergy learns of potential abuse, the pastor must report the suspected abuse to child line. Question two, what if I see indicators of child abuse, but the suspected abuser is someone I know or trust? It is likely that the person whom you suspect as the alleged abuser will in fact be someone you know, someone you volunteer alongside, a parent or family member, or family friend of the child or youth. Those who abuse are 93% of the time someone who is known and trusted by the child and adults around the child. 
In nearly one half of all cases, the abuser is a member of the family or extended family. This is the challenge before us. We must put the interest of the child first and make the report of suspected abuse, even if it is someone we know and trust. We as adults must intervene on behalf of the child. Question three, what if I take on a short-term volunteer opportunity, like an event chaperone? Am I still required to report suspected abuse? Pennsylvania law states that any paid staff or unpaid individual volunteer who is part of a scheduled program, activity, or service, and who accepts responsibility for a child is a mandated reporter. This means, yes, even with short-term events, you would be considered a mandated reporter and you would be responsible for reporting suspected abuse to Childline. In Matthew 19, 14, we hear these words. Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. As adults involved in the children and youth ministry at our church, thank you for taking the time to complete this course, because you want to do all you can to help bring children and youth to know and experience Jesus. As children get to know and trust you, there are times when a child might share something that is going on at home that is troubling. How to respond is what we will consider next. In the case where a child comes to you and discloses abuse, it is critical to respond appropriately and compassionately. All of us are not trained crisis counselors, but the words we use when a child discloses abuse can have a lasting impact on the child. Let's see an example. Isabel is a fourth grader in Sunday school. Her teacher, Ms. Lisa, notices that today she is not herself, appears withdrawn and unfocused. As the rest of the class leaves, Isabel asks Ms. Lisa if she can talk to her. As soon as the other students leave, she bursts into tears and discloses that her neighbor, a boy in the eighth grade, sometimes touches her private parts when they play together. Ms. Lisa's response was, I'm happy to help you, Isabel, and I'm sorry that this has happened to you. I want you to know that you did the right thing in telling me this and that this is not your fault. I believe you, and I believe that you have the right to be safe. So we need to tell others about this to make sure that you can be safe. Ms. Lisa did a great job responding to Isabel's disclosure. She used the SABER tool, developed by Bucks County Victim Assistance. Stay calm, S. I am happy to help you. Support, S. I am sorry this happened to you. Affirm, A. You did the right thing by telling me. B. Believe, it is not your fault. I believe you. Empower, E. You have the right to be safe. And report, R. We need to tell others about this to make sure you are safe. It's important to note that Isabel's abuser was actually another child. Not only adults, but also children can commit child abuse. In fact, statistics show that in one-third of all child sexual abuse cases, the abuser is under the age of 18. All incidents of child abuse, whether the suspected abuser is another child or adult, must be reported to Childline. So, what happens after a report to Childline? First, Childline will screen the report. Next, depending on their evaluation of the information provided, Childline completes the report and shares it with Child Protective Services at the county level or the police. Then, the child must be seen within 24 hours of receiving the report by the county children and youth services for further investigation. Finally, the investigation will determine what further action is needed to ensure the child's safety and welfare. We are going to address a few issues that may arise as you consider the responsibility of making a report of suspected child abuse. First, reports made to Childline are considered confidential under the Child Protective Services Law. This includes the name of the mandated reporter who makes the call. In the report to the church, every effort is made to keep the information confidential. However, information may be disclosed as needed by law to respond to allegations, 
or in information provided to the church's conference office. There should be no investigation conducted by the mandated reporter. The mandated reporter should engage in minimal fact-finding to gather the necessary information to make the call to Childline. The CY47 written report requests basic information that is helpful in the children and youth investigation. Do not delay in completing the CY47 if you do not have all of the information. Complete the form to the best of your ability and submit it to the county children and youth within 48 hours of your oral report to Childline. The Child Protective Services law provides that as a mandated reporter, when operating in good faith while making a report, the reporter has protection from employment discrimination and immunity from liability in civil and criminal proceedings. In instances where someone does not act in good faith or makes a false claim, it is considered a misdemeanor of the second degree. Except for those who need to know, a mandated reporter should not tell others about the suspected abuse or filing of the report, or the mandated reporter could lose immunity from liability and employment protection. The Child Protective Services law provides that when you, as a mandated reporter, willfully fails to make the required report of suspected child abuse, you commit a crime that can be charged and prosecuted by the county district attorney. From a moral perspective, it also helps to understand the impact that child sexual abuse has on the life of a child. David Finkelhor, in his writing, Adult Survivors of Child Sexual Abuse, identified four traumatic dynamics that he saw in adults who were victims of child sexual abuse. These traumatic dynamics include sexualization, betrayal, powerlessness, and stigmatization. Traumatic sexualization is the shaping of future sexual behavior as a result of the sexual abuse. The child may learn to use sexualization for affection and can lead to promiscuous behavior in adulthood. Betrayal includes feelings that can occur when a child realizes that someone that they trusted caused them deliberate harm. This can be with family members who did not say anything and lead to them not trusting future partners. Powerlessness is a feeling that results from a child's inability to stop abuse. This is made worse by the lies that are given by the abuser and the powerlessness that children feel when they can't stop the acts or refuse them. As adults, they may not be able to refuse or have unsafe sex. The child may feel stigmatized as a result of the negative messages communicated to him or her about the abuse and the resulting effect their messages can have on their self-esteem. This can convey a message of shame and guilt. These dynamics can be reduced or possibly eliminated with appropriate interventions, such as counseling. A child abuse victim shared, I have confided that something wasn't right with countless adults that I thought I could trust, all of whom patted me on the head and told me not to speak of such things. I remember just wanting someone to help me stop the abuse. The failure of adults to respond can have a lifelong altering impact on victims but sometimes that failure may have the ultimate consequences. In 2012, an 11-year-old boy was beaten to death over a nine-hour period by his mother's boyfriend. The neighbor, who did not want to be identified, told the Philadelphia Action News she wished she had done more to help. I can't stop crying and I blame myself because I should have called on them a long time ago and I didn't do it. I feel so bad and everyone knew. Everyone who knew me knew. You are not alone as a mandated reporter. The law identifies a variety of individuals in a number of professions, which is included but not limited to physician, medical examiner, funeral director, dentist, nurse, clergy, school administrator, teachers, social service workers, law enforcement, volunteers, and attorney. On any given day in Pennsylvania, individuals in positions like you are calling Childline when they have reasonable cause to suspect abuse. In 2013, Pennsylvania received more reports of suspected child abuse than any other year on record. 
As adults, we provide an important intervention when we report suspected child abuse. As challenging as it may be to call, if you fail to call, you leave the very adult responsibility of stopping the abuse on the shoulders of a child or youth. Your role to report suspected child abuse is that simple. It may seem like a small role, but it is a role that can change the course of a child's life. It is a role that could save their life. From the very first book of the Bible, after Cain had murdered his brother Abel, we see him ask God the well-known question, am I my brother's keeper? Of course, the answer for all people is yes, I am my brother's and sister's keeper. That is, I have the responsibility to do that which is in my power to protect the life, well-being, and integrity of my fellow human beings, even when it is difficult to do so. This includes the reporting of abuse when you have become aware or have reason to believe that it has occurred. That's it. You have completed the final part of our training for learning about and responding to child abuse. You will need to enter the code on this page, CUMC 2013, onto the quiz page as you begin. Please go back onto the website and complete the brief quiz. Your answers will be automatically submitted to the church office and a staff member will be in touch within a week regarding your results. You need seven out of 10 correct to pass the course. Again, thank you for caring for our children and youth and making time to complete this course so we can best care for and protect our children and youth. This concludes this Carlisle United Methodist Church Safe Sanctuaries and Mandated Reporter training video, part three.